It's been 25 years since Titanic made our hearts go on and on and on and on. We are going to talk about what was fact and what was fiction in the James Cameron film with as few Celine Dion references as possible. Maybe we'll see. I'm Joey C. Let's go! Starting off with the most shocking piece of information, Jack Dawson and Rose DeWitt Bukata weren't real. Just kidding, you knew that. But I'm going to tell you about the inspirations behind them. Jack wasn't really inspired by anybody, but there was somebody on the Titanic by the name of Jay Dawson. How crazy is that? And his grave received tons of visits after the movie came out mistaking him for Jack Dawson. People left ticket stubs, pictures of Leo DiCaprio, but it's not Jack Dawson, man. The J stands for Joseph Dawson. He's kind of like a third cousin. He was a member of the ship's crew. Yeah, a coal trimmer, if you will. James Cameron came out and said he had no idea who Joseph Dawson was until after the script was finished. So I guess it's kind of a crazy coincidence. Rose, on the other hand, was based on a woman named Beatrice Wood. Since James Cameron was reading her autobiography during the development of the film. Beatrice Wood was a painter, sculptor, actress, and writer. A jack of all trades, if you will. Pun intended. What's that? Stop immediately? Sorry about that. I'm not sorry, I'm gonna keep going. Anyways, yeah, Beatrice Wood was alive when the Titanic sank, but she had no connection to the ship. Rose's inspiration comes from entirely outside the real Titanic's history. Speaking of Rose, she brings a Pablo Picasso painting on board the ship. And Picasso back then wasn't really a uh, Picasso level of famous. Cal Hockley, Rose's fiance, makes a comment about how Picasso will never amount to anything. Yeah, he's not the sharpest iceberg in the ocean. Literally. God, the puns. I need to be stopped. Someone, can you guys turn off my microphone, please? Anyways, these are real paintings, but they didn't go down with the Titanic. Actually, they were nowhere near the Titanic. One of them is Picasso's Le Demoiselle David now. Listen, I know we can barely say the name of the painting, but if you want to go see the actual painting, you can go to the Modern Museum of Art in New York City. Oh, by the way, while you're listening to me talk about the Titanic, why don't you click that little subscribe button? We can hang out all the time and have wonderful conversations. Now let's talk about the most tragically famous scene in the film, the instrumentalist playing music as the ship goes down. It's true that the band continued to play as long as they could while the ship sank. Specifically, Wallace Henry Hartley was a violinist who led the band on the Titanic. Once the iceberg was hit, Hartley got the eight musicians together and they played songs on the boat deck near the entrance to the grand staircase. The movie gets pretty close to that, but the songs that they played, that's speculated. I'm sorry, where was I? I got distracted. I was on my phone for a while. I was looking at a SpongeBob meme and it was, it was, it was good. Anywho, let's get back to the video. They played waltzes and ragtime music, appropriate for 1912. There's mixed stories of what the last song they played was though. Newspapers said it was nearer, my God, to thee, which is what they played in the movie. That's also what the 1952 film used, which also tells the story of the Titanic. But some survivors said it was Song the Autumn. They also reported that the band played Alexander's Ragtime Band and In the Shadows before that. While we're talking about real life tragedies, let's talk about Isidore and Ida Strauss. At the end of the movie, there's an old couple that stays on the ship, holding each other in bed while the water fills their room. Isidore was one of the co-owners of Macy's Department Store. You know that store that your Nana shops at? Yeah, I can't believe it either. Him and his wife were offered spots on lifeboat number eight. But Isidore said he was staying on the ship as long as there were women and children not on boats. And I gotta tell you, that's a big W, homie. Big W. And of course, Ida wouldn't leave Isidore. And they were last seen sitting on a pair of chairs together on the ship's deck. Isidore's body was found, but Ida's wasn't. And if you're a grandmother watching this and you shop at Macy's, which I'm sure you do, I'm sorry if that ruined it for you. These people were honored in the movie. But you know who wasn't honored? Bruce Ismay. That dude sucks. In James Cameron's movie, Bruce Ismay sneaks on a lifeboat after helping people get on it, which is drastically different from the captain. And we'll get to him soon. There was a real first class passenger named Jack Thayer who said he saw Bruce pushing his way into collapsible sea. Thayer didn't blame him, and it's honestly hard to, in hindsight. Not everyone can be as notable as Isidore Strauss. Let's be honest, half of us would have probably done the same thing. Still, Ismay was made fun of all over the place. There were even cartoons of him sneaking off the ship. The guy hid from the public pretty much forever after that. On a more positive note, another movie character who was real was Margaret Brown. 
aka Molly Brown. When the Carpathia shows up in New York with survivors, there were like 30,000 people dying to interview them. When someone asked Margaret how she survived, she said, typical brown luck, we're unsinkable. God, she's cool. She also helped people board the lifeboats and did everything she could to keep people calm while the ship was going down. She even told boats to go back for more people. A lot of people survived because of Margaret Brown. Big W, baby. Big W. John Jacob Astor was also a real person. The movie makes a big deal about this dude being the wealthiest dude on the ship. And, yeah, the dude was. He had $150 million in 1912 money. That's like $4.6 billion in today. Good lord, what did he do for a living? Oh, I didn't read the script long enough. He got his fortune from making mechanical devices. If you've ever ridden a bike and used a bicycle brake, you can thank old Johnny for that. Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but at least his inventions live on, or move on, or, or go on. My heart goes on. Now this last thing we're gonna talk about is heavily speculated. So I'm just gonna present all the options and you can tell me which one you think is most likely. We know Captain Edward John Smith went down with the Titanic. In the movie, he enters the bridge and grabs the wheel as water rushes inside. That was taken from one of the survivor's account saying that he saw that happening to Captain Smith. There's a couple of stories of what possibly happened though. Other survivors said they saw Captain Smith in the water with a life jacket. So maybe he jumped when the ship was going down. A kid saw him put a pistol to his head and fall down, which was also reported by other survivors. But crewmen said that wasn't the case. His body wasn't recovered, so we don't really know. It's kind of a bummer to end things on something so uncertain. But let us know in the comments below if you know a fact about the Titanic that makes your heart, well, go on. That's the last one, I promise. Thanks for watching, everybody. We greatly appreciate it. Subscribe below. See you later.